Comparative negligence is a partial legal defense that reduces the number of damages that a plaintiff can recover in a negligence-based claim. If you are confused, don't worry, because Misha Moulton with the Law Offices of Misha Moulton joins us today to tell us more about comparative negligence. Good morning, Misha. Good morning, Jessica. Wonderful to have you back. Thank you for having me. Well, we need to do some explaining, especially with someone like me, right? I'm like, talk to me about this. So yeah. tell us what comparative negligence or comparative fault is. Absolutely. So it basically just means that when you as an individual have somehow contributed to the accident. So what we have to do is we have to try to figure out exactly which party is at fault. And sometimes there's situations where a party's not 100% at fault. Sometimes the comparative negligence doctrine shows that two parties can be partially at fault. And we have to try to determine what percentage that is. Okay, so that's kind of like if you're, let's say, in, an, in a car accident and, right. or, or even, um, let's say, something as minor, right, like a fender bender or something like that. It's kind of figuring out, well, who wasn't paying attention or who stopped abruptly or something like that, right? Exactly. There's, there's various factors that can lead to a comparative fault situation. Uh, speeding might be one of them, distracted driving, not mm -hmm. necessarily paying attention. So we have to try to figure out what exactly caused the accident to happen. Happen, and if there was something that contributed to it that partially could have been, you know, the other person's fault as well. Absolutely. Now, how does someone go about not getting into a situation like that? So the biggest thing I tell my clients all the time and just tips that I give out is distracted driving is probably the number one way. So our phones, mm -hmm. text messages, anything along those lines. If you have the ability to drive with your do not disturb on, I would highly recommend that. Or maybe even some kind of system that you know helps to read your text messages so you're not having to look away from the road. Also speeding, as I had mentioned, just making sure that you're following whatever speed limits are listed on the road and that you are not following too closely and very simple use your blinker when you're mm -hmm. moving lanes uh, you know failure to yield sometimes is also a big factor in this situation as well absolutely now what let's talk about the state we're in right so yeah. what does nevada consider uh, when it comes to being at fault and, yeah. and all, like, what does Nevada say? Because as we know, from state to state, everything changes, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Nevada actually has adopted kind of its own rule. It's uh, every state is different in how they evaluate this. And in Nevada, it's as long as you are not 51% or more at fault. So meaning you can be 50% at fault, uh, but you can't be 51% or more, meaning you can't be the person who's majority at fault for the accident. Mm. And as long as you're not 51% or more at fault, then you can actually still file a claim and you can recover. The only difference is that whatever percentage of fault they find you at, your damages will be reduced to that amount. So let's say you're found 30% at fault, mm -hmm. uh, your damages will be reduced by 30%. And that will usually end up having to come out of your own pocket. Now, what are some ways that, let's say, you know, someone finds themselves in this kind of situation, yeah. what are some ways that they can take in terms of the steps to ensure that everything is on record and it doesn't become sort of like a he say, she say on whose fault it was? Yeah, absolutely. So the number one thing I say as well is dash cam. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a dash cam already, definitely recommend getting one. It's probably some of the best evidence that you can provide. Also, uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're in an accident, call the police right away. So that way there's an on-scene investigation. Look around for any witnesses that may have been able to uh, view the accident and how it happened. These are all different situations that can kind of help figure out exactly who was at fault and to what percentage. Absolutely, and why is it so important to bring in an attorney in, in yeah. a situation like that? So what we do is we're able to really sit down with the client and get their side of the story. And we're able to find exactly uh, you know, what happened and then also try to determine if there's something that you can provide us, some kind of information you can provide us that can help reduce the comparative fault on your side of things. So our goal is to try to make sure that your damages are not reduced 
reduced and that there's less comparative fault on your side. So we're really skilled in this aspect and we mm -hmm. see this all the time. So I highly recommend anytime you're in an accident to get an attorney involved, but especially if you find yourself in a situation where you may have contributed to the accident in some kind of way, that to get us involved right away and do not give any kind of statement to the insurance company. They're gonna be looking for admission right away. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Of you course. always give us such really great insight and advice on things like this. Yeah. Chris, thank you. The law offices of Misha Moulton are on Howard Hughes Parkway. For more information, you can visit MishaMoultonLaw.com.